guys, my name is Sevagami, Sev for show, and welcome to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be discussing books that are guaranteed to make you cry. Um, it's kind of unconventional to release this on Valentine's Day, but they do some of the books they do involve like passionate love stories, which in the end they will leave you distraught. So the first book I'll be mentioning is Not and Crosses by uh, Mallory Blackman. And basically I read this when I was 14 years old and it clearly tells you, hey, not suitable for young readers. And my dumb self thought, you know, I can handle this book, I can read it. And it left me like so sad that I couldn't finish the series. Like I remember just feeling like so like distraught and like so sad that I just couldn't like carry on with the story because I was like what's the point I don't want to read this anymore um until quite recently when a friend mentioned it and she said oh you know the series is so good you should finish it and I thought okay why not so you know I put myself um through reading this book again and again like knowing full well how it ends I still ended up like boiling my eyes out and the thing with this book is that it's one of those books where you need like a few days off, like even a week to kind of like mourn the book, like mourn what happens at the end. So I definitely recommend this one. So this is a young adult dystopia where basically it's a world where there are um, notes and crosses. So it's like two different societies. So whilst notes are like white people, they're like the second class citizens. So they're the ones who are like um unfairly treated and they don't get like the same opportunities as the crosses whilst you know crosses are like the black people uh, who are like the first class like citizens so it's kind of like the opposite of like you know what our actual history was and um like in the beginning of the book you get to meet Sefi and um Callum who basically Callum it's is a note so he's white whilst um Sefi is a cross and she's black and she comes from like a rich family who are quite well off and her parents have basically hired Callum's mom as the help around the house but then something happens and then she gets fired but uh, despite that uh, Sefi and Callum they maintain a friendship and it goes from like you know them being young and like being really like good friends to them being in you know, adolescence and then to adults and you get to see like the friendship progress into something more romantic and you also like experience like what they go through and how you know like Sefi she tries to integrate Callum into um her world and like make him feel accepted whilst uh, however hard she tries it just will never happen for Callum so Callum really struggles and it's also about our personal ambitions so you know he wants to you know like he's got like big goals and he really wants to make it despite there being like you know difficulties and people not like helping him throughout it and so yeah I definitely really love this one I think this one is really special because of Sefi and Callum because in this uh, book she takes it through like Sefi's like one chapter is Sefi where um you get to see how things are how things are viewed in her eyes whilst then the next chapter we Callum and how are things uh, viewed from his perspective so definitely like a must read so the next one is The Time Traveller's Wife by Audrey uh, Niefnegger, if I'm saying it correctly. And that one, so I read this uh, like a while ago, so I borrowed it from a friend, so I haven't got a copy of it. But I would definitely recommend this one, I really enjoyed it. I'm not someone that would reread a book, so I'm kind of contradicting myself because I definitely did say that I read like, Dots and Crosses again. But I would only reread a book if it's like part of a series and I've kind of like given up halfway through it. But this is definitely one that I'm going to be like purchasing because... Um, I absolutely love the story and it's again like another book that is going to make you cry. So the story is Claire, she's an art student and Henry is a librarian. So the first time Henry and Claire meet, uh, Claire she's like six years old whilst Henry is like I think maybe 36 years old. So yeah, you're probably thinking like, what, creepy, but it's really not. Um, then the next time when they get married, um, Claire is I think 23 years old and Henry is like 36 years old. So obviously, you know, the ages don't add up and the reason for this is because Henry is like the first person to be diagnosed with this like chronic chronic like misplacement disorder where basically he can like travel back in time I wouldn't say like back in time he can go he can basically travel in time whether it's like past present or future and you know the problem with um Henry is that it's not a problem but the the thing with Henry is that one minute, you know, he'll be eating lunch and then the next thing he will be, you know, misplaced somewhere in time and he will just find himself, I don't know, in like in the future talking to like the future self of Claire or like finding Claire again when she's younger. 
So it's really interesting and what's really special about this book is the passionate love story and how no matter what in time um, he sort of always gets pulled back to Claire and um, you know this is really difficult for Claire because uh, Claire she'll be with him and you know they'll be living together and then he'll be going missing for you know maybe it'll be hours maybe it'll be days at a time maybe it'll be like months at a time she never knows so you know she tries to kind of have like a normal life um, even though he goes missing for like you know like a long time and then you know they end up having like a child together and yeah so he sort of like tells you the story of these two people and you know how they get through this even though um, you know it's really difficult for them. I do think that this is one of the stories that's quite unforgettable like you will not forget like even the small details about it you'll remember it. So I think the author's done a really good job at like you know writing this story in a way where it's still like understandable where he is placed in time and also like move the reader to tears. So the next book is One Day by David Nichols and again I don't have the copy for this one because I borrowed it from a friend but I really like this one so I'll probably reread it. Um, I, in fact I actually watched the movie again like a few days ago. So the story of this one is um, so basically Emma and Dexter they both go they both went to the same university I think in um, in Glasgow in Scotland and they um, they've not really like m they kind of know each other but they've not like officially met until their graduation night and you know they're both quite drunk and you know they should have you know they basically go back to I think Emma's flat and they should have done the deed but they don't instead they end up having a meaningful conversation um, and then they end up spending like the next day together which basically leads them to have like a really strong friendship where um, every year on the same day they stay in touch, they try to see each other or like they will like call each other and it's a really sweet story in my opinion like you basically get to see their friendship and how they um, how they go from being young adults and how they navigate through life so you know whilst in the beginning it's difficult for Emma so Emma moves to London and she wants to be an author but she ends up working in like a Taco Bell restaurant whilst you know Dexter has done pretty well he goes off to like um he goes on like traveling and he goes on to be like a tv presenter and then that's what's like really special about this book is how they you know support each other throughout it all but also how their friendships are kind of you know the lines are blurred they kind of you know go you can tell they're a bit more than friends but it's just never the right time for them and that's the issue and what I really liked about this book is that it really felt real you know like without even realizing 20 years go past and you know like before you know it you're like in this situation and I think it really reflects on like real life and how things go by so fast and you really shouldn't live with any regrets so I definitely really enjoyed this book and I've really liked the movie as well so I definitely recommend this and you know at the end basically something happens um you know you can obviously tell that it's going to be regarding them too but it's still definitely a surprise so the next one is the lovely bones by alice sebold and i'm sure many of you have already like read this book so this is a story of susie who is 14 years old and she's been murdered and she basically lives in heaven where she watches her friends and family um, live their lives on earth so she you know initially watches how they really struggle to come to terms with uh, her murder and you know how her friends struggle and you know eventually how they kind of like move on and how her friends um you know they get to do things um that she will never be able to do because you know her life has been taken away from her and um in this book there are you know really sensitive topics such as you know being being raped um putting your trust in an adult that misuses it but somehow the author, she's, you know, transformed this into something hopeful. So I wouldn't say this is like a difficult book to read, but it's the difficult one to digest. And um, this is like, she, Susie, so she basically tells you the story from the first person. So you can really, you're basically in the head, you see like the struggle and like the pain that, you know, she, she has to live with, like, even though she's in heaven. So after reading this one, I was really intrigued by the author and I found out that she actually wrote a memoir called Lucky where she reveals how she was raped herself and beaten up and just left for dead in a campus. So if you really want to have like a good you know, understanding of like, um, you know, like the emotions in this book, I would definitely recommend reading Lucky as well. Next one is uh, the diary of a young girl which is basically the diary of Anne Frank so I'm sure many of you have heard of Anne Frank you know what she's gone through and how you know in the end she dies and this one I mean it is you know it's real life so it's obviously really sad to like 
her story and like what she has gone through. I've always wanted to read her diary after I visited um, where she lived in Amsterdam, which, you know, I got the chance to do so. And by doing so, I also felt like I had a better understanding of her diary and really like what she had, go what she had gone through and what it was like to live in this annex um, with her family. So basically in the diary, she really tells you. So basically Anne Frank, she, her and her family, they live in Holland and this is based in like World War II time when the Nazis were st uh, start taking over. So then, you know, they didn't really have a chance to like escape to another country. So instead what they do is that her and her family, alongside with another family, they uh, go into hiding in an annex uh, of an office building. And with the help of, you know, like outside friends, they manage to get food and they also get like outside news. But, you know, it's very difficult because they have to really like hide. I mean... You know, like we we have we think we have it bad by being confined and not being able to go outside, but this is a whole other thing. Like they have to live in this annex and they can make no noise. They can't flush the toilet. They have to be really careful with the steps. Um, you know, it's really hard for them to get hold of food as well. And basically, you get to find out like you know the routine that they have and how they live in this small annex. Like because of the circumstances, she's not a young little naive little girl. She is. She is pretty much a young adult because of what she goes through. And you see, you know, like what sort of woman she sh she would have been if she, you know, got to live. And it's really hard because she's really incredible and it really makes you like attached to her. And, you know, knowing how it ends, it's like really difficult to read this diary. So the last one is uh, The Mockingjay in the Hunger Game series so i'm not going to tell you what the story is about because i'm sure like many of you know already um i'm sure you've watched the movies as well but i personally find like the last one so hard like i bawled my eyes out because of what happens at the end um you know you know even though candace she fought for something you know like a big change in the end i think deep down like because of what happened the initial reason she fought for was kind of like taken away from her um that's like the best way to put it so yeah this is the last one I'll be recommending in the books that are guaranteed to make you cry.